nobody in the edit kind of said, guys, maybe we need to find another way to communicate. Or sometimes silence is good. Yeah. We get we get it. What do you say? Carolyn. Carolyn. What's your favorite scary movie? It's one of this. Everybody, welcome back. Another episode of the Air on the Head Show. Of course, it makes me Lance, my partner in crime there. I'm Mr. John Fallon. Sitting here talking all the movies once again, man. How you been? I'm okay, man. I'm okay. How you doing? Ah, can't complain. No. Yeah, can't complain. Ah, same, same. I got to say, I was a little bit bummed. Uh, the, um, I think it was yesterday I found out that uh, Ray Stevenson, the actor, passed on at 58 years old. Do you, can you, you guys and those believe that? 58. <laughs> No, it, that stuff always makes me nervous because I'm. Always, I always kind of get guide these things. It's like he was. I'm not sure his health per se, but he looked relatively healthy as a taller guy. But dude, I've always liked him. I loved him in Rome. That's where I first Rome, discovered wow. him. I, yeah, that's that's yeah, always be uh, me too. Always be my guy in that. I think he was an awesome Punisher in a very mm-hmm. silly movie. He was. I agree. At S and that, uh, uh, kill the Irishman. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, with uh, walking an amazing movie, dude. This was cool. Every time he's in something, I, I was, I was, yeah, I was rooting for him. Me too, me too. Actually, you know what, uh, guys and dolls, in honor of Mister uh, Ray Stevenson, here's a couple of clips of his career right now. Just a couple. Suppose you saw something which made you suspect something, something terrible. Would you tell the husband of the suspicious article? Let me put you out of my misery. You have taken away. The one thing that made NASA what it was. You have given her prosperity. There are three things I love in this world. Kylie Minogue. Small dimples, just above a woman's buttocks. Beautiful features. And the fear in a man's eye who knows I'm about to hurt him. Well, you know what? This is all depressing, so let me leave. <laughs> That's like, oh, we're done. We're done. Well, it's going to get more depressing. We're getting to Poltergeist 3, so, um, you know. Um, yeah, Poltergeist 3. Let's uh, lead into uh, drinks. In honor of, of you know, the, the late great Heather work, I decided to pull out something a little classier than I would normally be drinking on a, a weekday. So I'm pulling out some Santa Teresa Venezuelan rum. Holy shit. It's good. It's very good. Just yeah, not a lot. Just that and a bunch of ice because it's rum. And I'm going to sip it out and uh, discuss movies with my old buddy here. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, for me, I was actually tired of water and green tea and, you know, all stuff that's kind of meh, especially for an episode like this, because, you know, Heather O'Rourke, you know, we'll talk about that later and Ray Stevenson. So I went heavy but light, but it's uh, Mamitas. Ah, one of those little, uh, I, I use this to mix in some vodka and stuff. I like this. Yeah, tequila and soda. Really, it's yeah. water. It's water, but it's branded as tequila and soda. So that's a little yeah. bit of a kick. That's all. Exactly. So, mm. you want to raise a toast, my friend? Hi, right, well, to, to you, to Heather, and to oh, Mr. Ray Stevenson. And to all of you. Cheers. Hello, my friend! So, Poltergeist <sighs> 3. We, we watched the second one, decided to, to jump on this, and it's been a long time, actually. Uh, for me, it's been, a, it's been long enough where I forgot good chunks of this which is always fun uh, that's my favorite kind of movie to revisit because i get to kind of re-experience things uh i'll let you start actually i don't want to talk about the movie right now i actually want to talk about heather o'rourke i gotta say i remember i was uh, when i was a kid and every morning i would go to um you know the kitchen table and my dad would read a newspaper called the gazette and he would give me the entertainment section and he would read like you know the bad news and I remember I was a kid, I'd see Poltergeist. I don't remember, remember I, yeah, I'd seen Poltergeist too as well. And I opened up, I got the entertainment section, I put it down, it was a picture of Heather O'Rourke, this was before the internet, uh, boys and girls, uh, and pronounced her dead. And I was like, and I'll always remember the picture too. And I broke down and bawled, bawled. I don't know why, to this day, I don't really get why, but I bawled. And eventually the first time I came to LA, I actually went and uh, visited her grave and put a flower there. So I don't know why I always kind of had a connection. It sounds fucking lame as fuck. I know that. But kind of like a connection. I don't know why. I really can't explain it. Oh, man, there's a lot of weird shit about her death out there, man. Are you aware of that? I've uh, I've seen some stuff. 
I don't think we should really get into it in depth, but if you're curious, you know, Heather O'Rourke's death was attributed to a misdiagnosis and she was on the wrong medication, hence her, how she's bloated in Poltergeist 3. Eventually, I think it had to do with her intestines, they blocked and she died. Something like that, don't quote me on it, I'm not a doctor. That it came from, uh, you know, Epstein-like stuff, that her death came from that. Somebody, you could read it up on it, her gravestone has been desecrated so many times they actually moved the body, the gravestone, so they moved the body to another grave. Uh, one time, somebody wrote, RR, all worn out, spray painted it on a gravestone. That was like one of the first weird things to happen. And RR was a reference to a TV show, Rocky Road, that she was on. And all worn out, well, Epstein shit, you know? We'll leave it at that. But for me personally, it, it has been attached to my fascination with the movie. It's it's a dark it's a dark thing. I mean, the whole the you know the, the Poltergeist series as a whole, at its best, is covered in absolute darkness. Yeah. I mean, it it this Calvin followed suit from the first two. I mean, you know, we talked a little on the last episode, so I'm not trying to get into it here, but let's just say they they call it the Poltergeist Cursed. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe in it per se, but I would say that there's a lot, a lot of weird stuff on these movies, and it happens to be all three. I'll give you this one, which is really weird. There's a poster of a Super Bowl in the first Poltergeist in the kids' room with a date and a year. And the date and the year is the date and the year that she died, like the exact date and the exact year. And the year was after the original Poltergeist. That's in the future. No, no, not at the current which time. Which winds up being the exact date that she passed. Oh, I'll leave it at that. If you remove all that stuff from this movie, uh, it's still a fascinatingly weird and, and odd movie. Just alone, you know, and I didn't know a lot of that. I just knew that she died. Um, but even that, it, it's kind of like you and me were talking once before. It's like a, a bit of a crow situation, you know, finishing a film. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a location change. It's a cast change. Everything about this movie is strange. Well, it, it started off right away. What I like about the film is uh, it's very ambitious and it goes outside the mold. And but right out the gate and you could tell they shaved off like 17 or 18 pages of the script uh, because they they slashed the budget. So, you know, the movie is set up in a high rise. But it feels more contained than it should be. You know, it feels more, quote unquote, low budget than it should be. And uh that was a shame. But with, with that said, I really appreciate what uh, Gary Sherman, the uh, writer director actually, uh, pulled off with all his in-camera tricks, uh, which completely blew my mind on this watch, especially the mirror stuff. You know, walking down the hallway, the door opens, cane comes out, the other cane comes out. I'm like, wow, and this is all in-camera, no VFX. I'm like, how the fuck they pulled that off? I was really impressed by uh, the effects of it. Yeah, 100% agree. I, that's, and I, I remember liking it, you know, every time I watch it, but I agree. As, I think at this age, especially, you know, talking to you and just knowing more about the film business and industry, it, you know, more intimate th than I ever did. I think like, okay, I think it's stuff like going to watch one like this. Okay, I'm a director. How do I pull it off? Like, what's, what's my tools? How, you know, not computer. What do I do? And it, it it blew my mind. It blew my mind. I mean, I yeah. did some research and, you know, I mean, it's techniques I understand, like the, the developing of a room and stuff like that. But it's it's so well done and it's so articulate and so immaculate in its precision that it's it's something that should be celebrated more. It's just I think it's it's sad that it's the third movie of, a, of you know, of a dying franchise. Uh, there's a death of the lead. Like a lot of things get shadowed over these amazing effects. I was reading that they used a metronome to get people on on their timing. And I was like, that's that's brilliant. Here's the thing, I don't hate this movie. I should, I, I should. Why because should you hate the movie? Because it's a third movie in a, in a so series that, that has diminishing returns each time. The first one's a classic. Nothing should ever come after that. It, it changes the location, the family. I mean, everything everything about it Oh, so you like, less. you like more of the same all the time. Okay, so something deviates from the original. Oh, you know, Lancy Boy complains. What's wrong with you, man? I'm saying I should. I don't. I like a high rise. There's things about it I think are really cool. Um, that being said, as you mentioned the one in the episode before with Poltergeist 2, 
Uh, as much as I love Tom Skerritt and Nancy Ellen, like they, they do not. I'm sorry, I gotta. I, you, sure. You had, you had to bring up Tom Skerritt. I'm trying to work out the bugs all that. Tom Skerritt on this run, I was fucking laughing my ass off. The man is the slowest person alive. Carol Ann is, and we'll get into Carol Ann a million times later on. Uh, you know, yeah. Car Car Carol Ann's in the room, you know, the door opens. Everybody's like, ah, not Tom Skerritt. Anytime there's a scene, where there's supposed to be an urgency. Tom Skerritt is so not urgent. Just came up through the ice. He takes his sweet ass fucking time getting from point A to B, point A to B, C, and it is fucking hilarious. I was laughing my ass off and his level of emotion, like, what was it? I think it's when, um, is it Tangina? Somebody comes out of a body on the ground. It's a great fucking practical effect. Oh, um, uh, his daughter comes out of his daughter's body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That motherfucker was not impressed by that one bit. You're safe now. Kill He never showed an ounce of fear. In fact, he was he was <laughs> he so did. cool, it was actually <laughs> distracting. He's like, listen, we gotta go get Caroline in the mirror world. We yeah, gotta do it now. It's like Nancy Ellen's freaking out. We gotta leave. He goes, no, no, no. We gotta get Caroline. We gotta go through the mirror. Like it's just Right, there's like smoking cigarettes and hanging yeah. out and just, ah, 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 you know, looks like the, the coolant's the, broken. The, the cigarette, the cigarette was just a setup because I noticed he didn't inhale. So I'm like, okay, that motherfucker doesn't smoke. Ah, it was well, a, it was a setup for the car scene when the gasoline comes. So that way he has the, you know. Oh, the, the Chekhov's yeah. gun kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But still, yeah, yeah. I just want to bring back though, that with these two characters that I like, you don't get the same heartfelt connection yeah. as uh, no, Nelson and, and Joe Beth Williams. So it's like, I do feel it's, it's a downgrade. Well, it doesn't feel or, or it, it didn't feel organic to me, uh, the relationships. No. And I wasn't sure if it was the dialogue or the acting, but the interaction between both. Uh, probably both yeah, Skerritt and um, Robocop chick. Oh, um, uh, Nancy Allen, right? Yeah, Nancy Allen. My mistake. I just didn't buy it. Those two together as a couple, they just didn't connect. I, I noticed an off key or a throwaway line about. I don't, I don't know if the newlyweds are just married, but they I swear there's a line in here where they, they basically say that they're they're together like Not, recently. Yeah, like recently. Recently. Yeah, and I was and it's like it's such a weird thing. And I was like, I wonder because I agree the dynamic between everybody is kind of off. Like uh Nancy Ellen for most of the movie, which I completely forgot, is like, fuck oh, Carol Ann, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind and of I, like and that's her her niece or something. That's her yeah, sister's yeah. kid. Yeah. A bit off putting. I, mean, I kind of respected it because it's nothing you'd ever see now. I, you know, I just feel like they, they that's not that's not the type of thing you'd put in a movie. It's just I feel like that's kind of antiquated. She's like, fuck the bitch. Let's get our own kids. Then you run out on me to chase after that evil little brat again. Don't you understand? You know, it's like, no, we're all together. But I was like, OK, Nancy Ellen, like, she's making sense. Tom Skerritt's one's like, no, oh, no, there's this mystical beings and a weird uh, spiritual fight. We got we got We got to get the niece. Nancy Ellen's like, fuck my sister's kid. We're out. We're out. Yeah. Well, you, you want to make fun of somebody? How about that, that the boyfriend there with the Ronald oh, McDonald hair and the oh, fucking poor guy, poor guy. badge? That was one thing I noticed in that movie, man. No movie ever made me want to throw a couple kids out the fucking window in this fucking movie. The girl with the braces that's obnoxious with the glasses. Yeah, the bully for no reason. Yeah, for no reason whatsoever. I was like, the fuck is this shit? What the fuck is this shit? And then, you know, they drop her off to school and, and it's uh, that kid that tries to scare her. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where's, didn't they spank in those days and keep them in line? Because you wouldn't know. You would think we're in today's generation, yeah? I mean, there's a bunch of bullies for no good reason. But I feel all the kids were terrible. That's yeah. something that I noticed right away in this, like to teenagers. And it almost felt like a slasher sort of uh, yeah. Slasher yeah. stuck in here. And I was like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like the kids hanging out at the pool. I didn't like any of that. Laura Flynn Boyle. I, I yeah. like her in Twin Peaks. Uh, you know, yeah. she she gave Wayne the gun rack. I mean, I'll always like her. But I was like, what is she? What, what is the whole? What is she in, doing this movie? Like, she disappears. They bring an evil twin, and then it's just over. I'm like, she kind of wasted her time. Like, yeah. we could have focused more on Kane and Carol Ann and and well, Tom Kane, Skirt. Kane kind of sucked ass. Man. You're right. But I'm just going to admit this. This I saw this before the second one because this was on TV all the time. The second one wasn't. So I, to me in my life, I upgraded on Kane. So I don't hate this one as much. Because mm. somebody like you downgraded. But to me, it's like, oh, this is Kane. Then I get to see a new Kane. I'm like, oh, better Kane. Uh, but I like the idea of Kane being in this. I do. I, I know. No, I, I, like, I like the idea. And, you know, the guy that did the voice is the I, same guy that did the pickups, the um, ADR for. I didn't know that. I, back, I, yeah. 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 I read that. And also he was Dale and Rescue Rangers. And I'm like, 
Okay, kind of, kind of a a wide filmography, but yeah, yeah, he had said on credit. I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. And he, he was actually, always close. He would actually smoke like 15 cigarettes before doing his ADR so his throat would get raspy. So I don't know if he's dead of cancer by now, but let's see. Nope, that's, I think so. That's, I feel like I looked him up. I think he was still doing strong. That's but I'm dedication. Saying, I, I like the idea of the I, I care, they, We said this in the previous episode and and I wouldn't fight it here because I, I know it's 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 kind of a weird hat job. But they were smart enough to know that Kane needed to be the villain still. I don't like the idea of getting a mask on a guy and redubbing him. That's weird. I almost think like just get a new actor. Yeah. It's such a, a weird, a weird thing because it it stuck out more now. When I was a kid, I didn't notice the mask or the prosthetics, I should say. It actually seemed just like an old guy. Now yeah. on this watch, I was like, oh, they're really good at a lot of these cool effects in the mirror stuff, but that is definitely a man wearing a fake nose, cheeks, and ears. When he gets his head cut off. And his face, his head, like, comes apart. That was pretty yeah. money, dude. I thought that was pretty money. Oh. You didn't think so? See, that's funny. That was the one thing that I, I, I liked the really? idea of it. But it seemed a little cheap. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. That That's okay. the effect. That's the effect. But it looks like we're confessing. Okay. Formats. Well, do you want to talk about the worst cane moment for this asshole? It is the ending. Is the ending. Oh, dude, I, want, I almost laughed out loud. What, what, what part? You know. Kane wants Caroline, Caroline, bring me to the light, Caroline. <laughs> and then, um, what's the name of the... Uh... Tangina. Tangina, thank you. And she's... she's, she's so... <laughs> Sorry. You gotta tell me she waddles on she goes, over? She goes, Kane, you don't need her to get in the light. I can lead you into the light. And then it <laughs> reverses on him and he's like, oh, all right, cool. You know? And I'm like, what the fuck was that? They hold hands. They hold hands yeah. and walk away. It's like, why didn't you say that in the second film? Like his reaction shot to that almost felt like it was like I'm gonna I'm gonna use a bad word here. Don't get offended, please. Don't get triggered. I almost felt like he was gonna say, "Bitch, don't you tell me that before?" <laughs> All right, let's get the fuck out of here. You know, I, I was pissing myself. It negates everything though I, I gotta be yeah. well. It, it's just like okay, maybe I just misunderstood. But I thought he wanted to get to the light because he wanted to do something evil. But he's just like trying to go home, then, then maybe he could play a different card than fucking killing and, and, and like scaring everybody. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he might he might actually start off with like uh, make himself look less evil and just be like, hey, can you really help me real quick? I, I, I want to go to heaven. <laughs> you get, well, he's not going to heaven after what he did to, you know, I'm just saying his followers. Yeah, like he's just like, hey, what's good? Like, they just walk away. It's kind of peaceful. It was like a very like sweet ending. I'm like, he's the bad guy. Yeah. What, what are we doing here? You know, sort of. Framing him in this different light. They just walk away because Zelda him got to hold hands. They're holding hands. I thought that was kind of weird. If I'm him, I'm thinking in my head, why do I want to go in the light? I know I'm going to fucking hell for going by the, you know, the basic rules. So, but no, I guess he, yeah, he wanted to go to the light. But, but he looked, he, that, that look though, I, I could think of it. It's his yeah. mouth is kind of a jar. Like, and yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? Why'd you pull that, play that fucking card before, yo? <laughs> you know? I wasted all this time yelling Caroline for 140 times in a movie. Oh, yeah, you counted it? Well, no, no, I, I, they, they counted it on IMDb uh, 121 times. I, I was actually blown away by that, dude. I was watching the movie, and I'm like, how can nobody, Yeah. especially in the, the, the second act of the movie, it, you know, when she starts running away, when she gets out of the, uh, Caroline gets out of her room and get, goes through the building, was that in the script? And if it was, nobody in the edit kind of said, guys, maybe we need to find another way to communicate. Or sometimes silence is good. Yeah. We get, we get it. What are you saying? Caroline. 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 You know, he wants her to, you know, lead him in the light. But when she's running away. They could have easily just been like, hey, <laughs> you know, there wasn't one hey. They, and Caroline, it's kind of a long name. You know, it's a Carol. I mean, that's, that's, that's half the fucking room already. It's not yeah. like Mike, John. So how about, you know, just, hey, stop. It was Come almost abs absurd. It was actually absurd. Well, no, it got it got yeah. it got bad. And I I remember hearing about it, but this is the first time where I was like, oh, how, oh, we still got we still got twenty minutes, and there's there's they're still looking for Carol Ann. They're still gonna be looking for. Just you know, have like or mm, shit like that. You know, as she's running down the corridor or sees the the ice and everything like that. You don't need Caroline, Caroline. Don't want to hurt you. We love you, Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. Shut the fuck up, dude. What the yeah, fuck, she should bro? recognize your voice. I mean, Zelda Rubenstein as Sangina is such a specific voice. Just been like, I'm here for you. That's <laughs> all that should do it, you know? Yeah. 
One of my favorite parts though is when we when she like uh I forget where she's at and then she realizes Caroline needs help and she gets on a plane. Yeah. And she's like holding her, her necklace. She's like, Bring the mirror. Bring the mirror. Yeah. I don't like her, but I, I like her too. She yeah, she she was great in part one and I even loved her in part two. And it's not her fault. No, uh, no, it's, it's like a character, a yeah. caricature of the character is what this is. To some degree. That was is be by this point in in pop culture, it had to be a, a parody. You know what I'm saying? My favorite love to hate, hate to love character in that movie, and the logic behind behind his his intellect was the the head shrinker dude. Oh, my, oh, oh cartoonishly me. evil. Fucking me! No, no, not only that. When you know when Caroline Caroline's in the. Uh, school for gifted people i guess or children and he's walking around these two douchebags i don't know who they are what they do but for some reason wardrobe decided they're going to look as stupid as we can make them especially the broad or glasses nor bob hair i don't yeah, know what they, the they fuck. look yeah they look like yeah. i'm assuming like what corporate uh teachers would look like out of something like they're supposed to look so so corporate yeah they're just like what's going on mm. yeah, okay. yeah. yeah yeah so uh, you know i could I could break it down, but I'll, I'll give you the peak of it when, uh, you know, the hand comes in the mirror and throws it a cup and breaks the glass and he's, you know, checking it out. And then, you know, Caroline runs out, you know, the Tweedledum and Tweedledoo were like, oh, what happened? And and the shrink shrink dude says, uh, she convinced me that I saw that I, sh you know, saw my cup go and then convinced you to break the mirror. And I'm like, dude, where are you taking that from, man? Your ass? I it I'm, it's easier for me to believe in ghosts than believe to that theory. Like seriously, it's the stupidest theory I ever heard in my fucking life. It also means she has a superpower. She's yeah. an X Men. X Men at that point. I mean, yeah. like, like yeah, he probably over the fact that she could control people's minds in two different par parts of the same M mass I mean, illusion like, and you know Xavier. She's Xavier. Yeah, yeah, he's know? Xavier. But still, that that still says like. He says that like, oh, well, demons aren't real because she could control our minds and, and and change our focus in reality. It's like. That's scarier than demons at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah. essentially, she's either she's seeing something or she's powerful. But either way, she's right about something. So let's let's not piss her off because he seems like annoyed at her. He's like this this problem child who just controls reality whenever she wants. It's like, bro, you gotta. He's a douche. He's a douche. And then you know when they get the prank call. You know, he gets the prank call and he assumes it's Caroline. He's like puffing a puff and uh, he decides he's, he's going to go, you know, take care of that, you know, in person. Yeah, so then, then coat. yeah, he addresses it. But for some reason, he sticks around. The, you know, I'm like, OK, you addressed it. Go, go to fuck home. Okay, eventually, you know, the, the kids come out of the pool and he talks with um, the, the boyfriend with the Ronald McDonald hair and the, and the sheriff's badge. And, uh, you know, he hypnotizes oh. him and. I'm like, why is that guy still in the fucking movie? Why, why don't you, you you leave? What's his uh, pay grade? I, I feel like he doesn't make enough. I don't you know think he. Saying? I don't think he gets laid enough at home because for him to for a crank phone call, so phone call you hang up, you bang your wife. Wait, but like, obviously was she cooking dinner, but he like stopped yeah. dinner. Like like he stopped his life. He told her to put it on a low low heat. <laughs> I remember that. Put it on low heat. <laughs> Dude, that shit's burned by the time he would have gotten home because he, he wanted to hang around for some reason. So, you know, the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, that dude, because I'd forgotten, that dude better die. Because that's the only reason this motherfucker's hanging around, you know? Yeah, his body count. But he, yeah. that's a fun one where, like, uh, you know, she, like, smiles, Karen yeah. smiles, and it closes, opens, and he, like, falls in. Yeah, I was like, good. I wanted to see the fall, but low budget. That's what happens. So then yeah, you just up, see. It's like a little, like, yeah, doll. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. I like city horror. I think that's just not used enough because there's too many people. So I, I feel most directors and story writers think it, it deflates tension. But Demons 2 was kind of fun. I like this. I like, uh, of course, uh, Candyman. You know, I, I do think yeah. cities can be a good um, setting. And I do like the setting here. Flaws aside, I do think it's cool. The parking garage stuff, the the, the window washer. Yeah. Like that shit scared yeah. me as a kid. You know, some <laughs> weird guy looking at you in this. Ah. Well, that, that, that was great. You know, the Sherman really started uh, strong, you know, with, with the window and the soap and Caroline's behind it, blurry. And then, you know, because they, I think they got rid of the credits. The yeah, guy, right? exactly. Yeah, that was cool. I thought that, that was really clever. Uh. And, and it almost felt like. I don't know if they shot the movie in sequence, but it almost feels like they could have because the the further we got outside of the um, 
a car scene, you know, monster cars filled with, which I thought was really innovative, really cool, fun. really, really fun. fun. You don't see that every day, you know. And those last time, yeah. yeah, and they're frozen cars. So you don't you don't see that shit every day. So respect. Um, but the more we move forward, the, the less more it was like let let me get my coverage. That's what it felt like. Let me get what I need and just move on. Where the first like half hour, you see a lot of stylistic stuff, a lot, and you know. Yeah. Like small I, stuff in yeah. the background, yeah. Cool angles and and just a, a visual style that's a bit more heightened. Where further down, I felt it was a bit more basic. I hundred percent agree. I, I do. I, I do. Let me see one more positive, at least. That I like the idea of Kane, even if it doesn't make sense now because he's just trying to go home to the light peacefully, and not hurt anybody. But that explanation aside, I like that he's eating the warmth of of sort yeah, of like happiness and and everything becomes cold and icy. I like that a lot. I think yeah. that's like my favorite part. I like the idea that when he's around, things become like an ice world. I was like, oh, well, that's a cool visual yeah. concept. No, well, the build up is great. You know, the build up starting with the cracks yeah. in the mirror and, and then the, the room with the, the ice and and uh, yeah, it builds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even the, the stuff in the room, you know, with the mirror gag, you know, where she with her reflection, uh, like the old lady. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, uh, I thought it was, uh, yeah, it's just a lot of great ideas. Yeah. It's just, you know, they didn't get the fair shake, the money or the time, uh, to do them hundred percent properly. I just want to say one, one, one part that fascinated me uh, for a long time was the ending, you know, because uh, Heather wrote past, but they had wrapped, but then the movie was kind of PG and the studio wanted reshoots to up the gore and up the stuff. And through these reshoots, uh, they shot the new ending with uh, Carol Ann body double. Um, you know, as long as I can remember, Gary Sherman always said, we never shot the original ending. I heard about this. But and, there, and he was like, contradicted by like six people or something. Or well, what? if you go on the uh, yeah, Screen Factory Blu-ray, you have footage of the original ending. It's the same fucking ending, basically. I mean, basically, basically. like, I don't understand why they were shot. Like, it's really this. It, Besides, like maybe like a, a, a different angle, or you know, they're just like it's just actually more awkward because now they're just holding Carol Ann like clearly away from the camera yeah. because it's a body double. Yeah. I don't really get it. And when you know, now. when they had the shot, you know, no matter what Gary Sherman said, you know, all that time, maybe he forgot, you know. But when the film, you know, was in post production, you had they had that footage, and it's a shame because you know we'll show we'll show clip right now, and you can see. Yeah, you know, it's dead on, you know, on Carolyn, and it would have been nice for the movie to end with, with her Hugging. face. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but with her, her face on camera as opposed to what they have, yeah, which is a body double. Yeah, uh, just to honor her. So I'm surprised they didn't go that way. Maybe you know her passing got everybody, you know, all fucked up. It, it wouldn't me, you know, if I was a producer on that movie or even a director on that movie, it would fuck me up. So people are just scrambling just to get it done. Another thing about the, the reshot ending, if you notice. Um, Ronald McDonald with the badge. He doesn't come back. Oh, you're right. It's just uh, yeah. Lord from Boyle. Uh, yeah, everybody but him. But and in the original ending, he's there, like holding. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he's there. And the thing is, when they did the reshoot, he wasn't available. <laughs> and Sherman was like, "Yeah, no, fuck that shit. I don't, you know, um, I don't know what Sherman said. So maybe I shouldn't put it that way. He he basically, you know, said, "I'm not waiting for this dude. We're just going to shoot it. Doesn't matter." So and he was right. It doesn't matter. I'm OK if Ronald McDonald's stuck on the other side. I'm good with that. No, it's a weird it's a weird reshoot. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of things about this are weird. It's clearly it's clearly tinkered with clear cuts. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw the original ending and it's essentially the same exact ending. Just makes a little more sense. You know, it's, it, what I don't like about the new ending or the, the one that the theatrical one that we see is in the, the original ending, the lightning hitting the Hancock building yeah. is what brings him back. But in yeah. the 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 release ending, they use it as almost like a like a like a cane still around. It's like yeah, yeah. why? I thought yeah. it was only ten June that they're hanging out. You after uh, the lead character is dead, you're gonna tease a sequel. Yeah, that I seems agree. a bit. That seems a bit uh, off. I don't know. It was just something weird. But I but we would agree though. Like I think the the starting view on this is it's absolute garbage, and it's like nah, it's it's not. I think the, the the rap it's gotten is worse than the movie itself. Well, you know, you're 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 younger than me. Um, I never heard it was pure garbage. Uh, oh, I, I've heard it. that it was that it was flawed, and it is flawed. But uh, look, guys and dolls, you know, I don't know. Last time you guys and dolls uh, saw Poltergeist three, watch it watch again it. because it's you know the 
filmmaking has changed so much since 1988 and to see you know what mr sherman has done with in-camera tricks yes. and, and and in-camera you know visual you know effects with you know the mirror stuff and the creativity that came behind it and uh, just for that alone i appreciate the move get into the light with your comments below about poltergeist 3 come on king Come on, bitch. <laughs> we'll play backgammon. And uh, let, let, let us know what you think of the movie. Um, you appreciate it if you don't appreciate it. Um, to this day, I'm heartbroken that uh, by Heather O'Rourke's passing. So even watching Which the movie, life is precious. It, it made me sad, you know. So enjoy life, everybody. We never know when, you know, evil people or bad twist of fate will uh, take us out. Right? Heather O'Rourke and to Ray Stevenson. I'll drink to that. Cheers.